The Federal Reserve, commonly known as the Fed, plays a pivotal role in shaping the U.S. economy. Its decisions on interest rates have far-reaching consequences for businesses, investors, and everyday Americans. In this video, we'll explore the recent announcement of rate cuts by the Fed and discuss how you can prepare for these changes. The Fed's rate cuts are a powerful tool used to influence economic activity. By adjusting the federal funds rate, the interest rate at which banks lend to each other, the Fed aims to stabilize inflation, boost economic growth, and maintain financial stability. But what does this mean for you? Let's delve deeper. Rate cuts are when a central bank, like the Federal Reserve in the United States, purposely lowers interest rates. They do this to try to change how much people spend and borrow money. This is a part of their plan for managing the country's money, known as monetary policy. The Federal Reserve, often called the Fed, is in charge of making decisions about the country's money. They want to keep prices stable, make sure lots of people have jobs, and help the economy grow. To do this, they use different tools, and one of the most important tools is changing interest rates. The interest rate that gets a lot of attention is called the federal funds rate. This is the rate that banks use when they borrow money from each other overnight. When the Fed changes this rate, it also changes other rates in the country, like those for loans and credit cards. The Fed decides to cut interest rates when they think it will help the economy. They do this for a few reasons. First, if prices aren't going up very much, they might cut rates to encourage people to spend and borrow more. This can help the economy grow. Second, if the economy is not doing well, like during a recession, they might cut rates to get people to spend more money. This can help create more jobs and make businesses invest more. Third, sometimes things happening outside the country, like problems with trade or conflicts between countries, can make the economy unstable. In these cases, the Fed might cut rates to try to keep things steady. In 2024, the Fed said they were going to cut interest rates three times. This was unusual because they don't usually cut rates that often. Even though prices were going up more than usual at the beginning of the year, the Fed still wanted to go ahead with their plan. The chair of the Fed, Jerome Powell, said that they thought the increase in prices would slow down over time, so they weren't too worried. The Fed also thought that the economy would keep getting stronger, but prices would go down. This was an unusual situation, so they decided to cut rates to help the economy while still keeping prices stable. Now let's look at the impacts of rate cuts. When the Federal Reserve lowers interest rates, it means that it's cheaper for people and businesses to borrow money. This is good because it encourages spending and investment. When borrowing costs are lower, it means that people don't have to pay as much in interest when they borrow money. For example, if you want to buy a house or a car, you might need to take out a loan. When interest rates are low, the amount of money you have to pay back on that loan is less. This makes it more likely for people to buy big things like houses or invest in their businesses. Lower interest rates also mean that people are more likely to use credit cards or take out loans to buy things. This is because it's cheaper to borrow money when interest rates are low. So when interest rates go down, people tend to spend more money. When people spend more money, it helps the economy. This is because when people buy things, it supports different parts of the economy, like stores, the housing market, and other businesses. For example, if interest rates on mortgages are lower, more people might buy houses which can help the housing market grow. Lower interest rates can also affect the stock market. When interest rates are low, people might decide to invest their money in stocks instead of other things like bonds. This is because they can potentially make more money from stocks when interest rates are low. Also, when interest rates go down, companies can borrow money more easily, which can help them make more money. This can make the value of stocks go up. On the other hand, when interest rates go down, the prices of bonds tend to go up. This is because older bonds with higher interest rates become more valuable compared to newer bonds with lower rates. So, if you already own bonds when interest rates go down, you might make more money if you sell them. But if you want to buy new bonds, you might not make as much money because the interest rates on them are lower. Lower interest rates can also affect the real estate market. 
When interest rates on mortgages are lower, it's cheaper for people to buy houses. This can make the real estate market grow because more people can afford to buy houses. It can also help real estate investors because they can borrow money more easily to buy properties. If you have loans with variable interest rates, like adjustable rate mortgages, you might pay less money each month when interest rates go down. This can help you save money in the long run. You might also want to think about refinancing your loans to get a lower interest rate, which can help you save even more money. Unfortunately, when interest rates go down, the amount of money you earn from savings accounts and certificates of deposit tends to go down too. This is because banks usually lower the interest rates they offer on these accounts when interest rates go down. So, if you want to make more money from your savings, you might need to look for other ways to invest your money or think about diversifying your investments. When the central bank changes how it handles money, it's important to be ready and make smart choices about your money. Here's what you can do. 1. Review and adjust your investment portfolio. When interest rates go down, it can affect different parts of the economy in certain ways. Let's talk about stocks first. Some parts of the stock market tend to do well when interest rates drop. These include technology, healthcare, and consumer discretionary sectors. So, it might be a good idea to look at the stocks you own and see if you have some from these sectors. If not, you might want to think about adding some to your collection to spread out your investments. Now, about bonds. When interest rates fall, the value of bonds usually goes up. If you have bonds in your investment mix, you might want to think about moving some things around. It's often said that longer-term bonds can be more affected by changes in interest rates, so maybe think about switching to shorter-term bonds for a bit more safety. If you're feeling adventurous, you might want to look into some new areas to invest in. For example, technology companies can really benefit when interest rates are low. This is because it's easier for them to get money to keep growing and making new things. You might also consider looking into green energy. With everyone thinking more about the environment, companies working on clean energy might be getting more attention from investors. But remember, these are just some ideas to consider. Everybody's situation is different. It's always a good idea to talk with a financial advisor before making big changes to your investments. They can help you figure out what's best for you based on your own goals and needs. 2. Refinance your mortgages and loans. If you're thinking about saving money, you might want to look into refinancing your mortgages and loans. This means changing the terms of your loans to get a better deal. Lower interest rates can help you pay less each month, which can be a big relief for your wallet. For mortgages, if you already have one, it's a good idea to see if refinancing could help you save money. You can do this by comparing the interest rate you're paying now with the rates that are available. Talk to a mortgage broker or lender to find out if refinancing is a good option for you. The same goes for other loans, like car loans or personal loans. If interest rates have gone down a lot since you got your loan, refinancing might save you a bunch of money. But remember, everyone's situation is different. Before making any big decisions, it's smart to think about the costs and benefits of refinancing for you. You might want to talk to a financial expert to help you figure out what's best for you. 3. Boost Emergency Savings Having some money set aside for emergencies is really important, especially when things are uncertain with money. Here are some steps to help you do that. First, make a budget. This means figuring out how much money you get and how much you spend. Once you know that, you can decide how much of your money you want to save for emergencies. Treat this like you do with paying for things like rent or electricity. It's something you need to do. Sometimes you might get extra money unexpectedly, like if you inherit some money or get a bonus from work. When that happens, think about putting some of it into your emergency savings. It's like giving your savings a boost without taking away from your regular money. If you have time, you could also try doing extra jobs to get more money. This is called a side hustle. Any money you make from this could go into your emergency savings. Look around your home. Do you have things you don't need anymore? You could sell them to add to your emergency savings. Even though you want your emergency money to be easy to get to, you can still try to make some extra money with it. Look into accounts where you can put your money and still earn some interest on it. 4. Consider new financial opportunities. 
Investing in renewable energy can be a smart choice for those looking to support clean energy while potentially earning returns. One option is to invest in individual renewable energy companies or exchange-traded funds, ETFs, that focus on clean energy. These funds include stocks from solar, wind, and other renewable energy companies, providing diversification across the sector. Solar and wind ETFs specifically track companies involved in solar panel manufacturing, wind turbine production, and related technologies, offering exposure to the entire clean energy value chain. Hydroelectric power is another reliable source of renewable energy, and investors can consider companies involved in hydroelectric projects or funds that include hydroelectric assets. For a diversified approach, clean energy funds are available, investing in a mix of renewable energy sources and related technologies. Additionally, exploring investment opportunities in climate tech companies, which focus on innovative solutions for climate change challenges, can be beneficial. Critical minerals play a crucial role in clean energy technologies, so investing in companies involved in the supply chain for these minerals or clean energy component manufacturers like battery, solar panel, and wind turbine manufacturers could be wise. The Federal Reserve's announcement of three rate cuts in 2024, with three more anticipated in 2025, signals significant shifts in monetary policy. To prepare for these changes, consider diversifying investments, staying informed, and adjusting financial strategies accordingly. What are your thoughts on the Fed's rate cuts? Like, share, and subscribe for more insightful updates on economic trends and financial strategies.